Oh my god, it's so hot. You have no idea. We're like at 110 degrees today. It's so hot. So if you see my makeup looking shiny, it's not that I put anything on to look, make it look dewy and beautiful. It's just that I'm hot as balls. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Money Reads, where I talk about books and things. First of all, I am really nervous to film today. I don't know why. I'm just having a really hard filming day. I think it's because I had a migraine last night. I've been, you know, not filming for a while and... I don't know, I just, bear with me today. That's all I'm saying. Today, what I bring you is my mid-year wrap-up. Now, as you know, in the first half of the year, I only read 14 books. I say only, that's actually a really good number. Even if you read one book, it's still a good number. But usually, 14 books is what I read in a month in the year prior. So I just thought, you know, I haven't updated people on how I felt about these books. And I really want to talk about some of them. So here it is. This is my mid-year wrap-up. I'm going to go through these in the order that I read them. So going from January all the way up to June. And then, of course, my July wrap-up will be up at the end of July. And I'll let you know that... During July, I'm doing a catch up Goodreads challenge thing, which I don't know how that's gonna go, but we'll see. So the first book I read during the year is Kazuo Ishiguro, Never Let Me Go. Um, I have very little to say about this because I've said so much about it, but just in case you're new to my channel, hi, welcome, how are you? <laughs> I hope you like, I hope you subscribe, I hope you stay, but in case you don't know, this is one of my new favorite books of all time. Now this book is a sci- it's a soft science fiction book about a group of kids that grow up in a very kind of prestigious academy and in this world all diseases have been cured but for whom have these diseases, diseases been cured and at what cost? Now this book talks about the concept of what makes a life worth living who decides who lives and who dies and also the concept of love, jealousy, and friendship. It is a beautiful story told in a beautiful way. However, in this case, I will say that <laughs> I actually like the movie version better. So if you really want to get like an, this experience of reading this book, I suggest that you go into it watching the movie first and then reading the book because the book does get a little bit not repetitive but it's really slow and i think the movie will help you like get an idea of what's going on because sometimes it seems like it goes off on tangents and and it, and it just doesn't like it's not linear so it just it can get a little bit confusing so um yeah i really love this book i gave it five out of five stars and this was my first read of the year and i'm really happy because from here on out it just goes downhill baby the next book i read in the year is the martian by andy weir now in the martian very famous book we we're following this botanist called mark watney who mistakenly gets left for dead on mars and his incredible ability to survive on mars and hopefully make it back home now this book i also gave five out of five stars but surprisingly this is another book where i actually like the movie better i think mark Wahlberg brings a really beautiful human touch to the character that i think gets lost in a lot of the science in the book now however don't be scared off by the science in the book the science in the book is not that bad i mean it is actually that bad it's like i was just skipping like not skipping but i was just not paying attention to entire paragraphs because i didn't know what was going on but then afterwards it gets explained to you mark watney is an amazing character i think every character in this book is written so well which is why it made me so sad to think that um later on the next the next book that andy weir published was um artemis or something i don't remember right here and it was apparently it was very bad because just i don't think andy weir knows how to write women but i'm really looking forward to written project hail mary by him i really recommend you read this book it's a really good book i have nothing else to say i like i really have i think i've talked about this before in like a wrap-up or something but yeah love the martian everybody knows the martian love it 
Martian, I read Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. Now, this is the story about a man who has a severe learning disability and some scientists are able to get mice. They experiment on mice basically and they make the mice way more intelligent than they're supposed to be. And the, ma the mouse is named Algernon and then they decide to take this procedure onto humans. So they go from animal testing to human testing. And Charlie, the human lab rat basically, um, gets given a lot of intelligence. However, with said intelligence comes a lot of issues that I just don't know if the book handled them that well. I don't know what the book was trying to say about intelligence. I I felt the book was trying to say something that I don't agree with, which is the idea that the more intelligent you are, the more prodigious you are, the more you fall into this existential crisis of no one understands me and my intelligence. And I just think that that's some bullshit, you know? It, it's that idea of the lone genius who, know, who is misunderstood by society. You know, I just think that that's bullshit. And honestly, I keep saying this, I will say it again, I wanted this book to be about the mouse, not about the humans. So I gave this book, how much did I give it? I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars for what it is. Um, every time I mention this book, please note that this book does use some slurs. It uses the R word and I just don't know how comfortable I am at all with this book. I don't know why I gave it 5 stars, honestly. I, I think that... This book, if I were to rate it right now, it would be more of a three star. But I guess because it was a science fiction um, classic, I felt that I had to rate it higher. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't read this again. I really wouldn't. I think that the love story is really fucked up. I think the message about intelligence is really fucked up. I mean, what even is intelligence? I, are we talking about intellectual intelligence? Are we talking about emotional intelligence? Do those things go together? Are they, are, you know, I, not my favorite. And I think this book is the book that started the big reading slump of 2021. Next up, I read Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This was kindly, kindly gifted to me by my good friend Lena over at Sufficiently Advanced Lena. However, I did not like this book at all and it pains me because I'm so sad when somebody gifts me something and they're really excited for me to read it and I don't like it. And I'll be honest with you, the only reason I'm keeping this book is because this book is just fucking beautiful. But I gave this book two stars. This book is about uh, a man who is stuck in this like house and this house fills up with water and it there is another man there that he sees every now and then and he keeps a journal and he keeps trying to figure out what's going on. However, I feel the main character in this book was really dumb. Like you as a reader could figure things out that he was trying to figure out and it's like, why aren't you figuring this out? Like, what is going on? And, and also, as much as this is weird, and you know that I like myself some weird writing, this was a little too weird for me. Like, it, it, I was missing the point. I was like, what is even the point of this book? I think it doesn't help that this book was also heavy-handed heavy on the fantasy bit. And I just didn't enjoy it. I, I, I found the main character bland and I'm really like somebody that... Characters for me are so important. Like a book can have a bad premise, but if I like the characters, then I will rate it higher than if I didn't like the characters. So I just, I'm not sure, you know, this book just didn't, didn't do it for me. It just didn't do it for me and I gave it two stars. I just, I have nothing to say about this book because really, what I got from it was nothing. I got nothing from this book. So it just, it gave me nothing. The next book I read was The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. And I gave this four stars. Do I really have to say what this book is about? I would actually give this book a two star now if I was to re-rate it. But it's basically, um, it's a book about 
It's a book about an evil overlord and the people trying to take him down. That's what the book is about, honestly. And there's people that can use metals to do different abilities. And there's people that, I don't know. It, uh, this book could have been really good for me. I'm not saying for you. This book could have been really good for me if it didn't have the following things. One, the only girl in the group of all men because of course. And also, she's super powerful because why else would she be there? You know? Number two would be if it had been shorter. I know people love their big tomes. I know that people love when things get explained like really intensely. I mean, I love Dune. I'm not here to bash on it. But I just think that this book could have been condensed a little bit. I think that it was just too drawn out. And also, I also think that this book suffers from a syndrome where it thinks the reader is dumber than they actually are because there are these ex excerpts at the beginning of each chapter and you're like not supposed to know who they're from but it's really obvious who they're from or at least it was obvious to me and i just think that i loved this book the first half of this book or at least the first third of this book i was like yes yes girl yes i love it i i, I totally dig this this is my jam and then it was like okay so what's gonna happen okay so i did you know, I did like the the romance in this book. I thought it was really good. But other than that, it felt flat for me. It felt flat for me. I'm not continuing on with the series. I spoiled myself for the whole series. I had my good friend Jesse from Jesse, the bookish mom, tell me everything that happens. And honestly, I'm glad that I'm not continuing on with the series. I'm actually going to donate this book along with the two others that are in like the same style to my local library because I do have this book in um in another format like this specific book and I'm gonna keep that one just you know to have it in my shelves the next book that I read was kings of the wild I'm gonna just put up a picture because I'm not gonna go get my husband's copy I already talked about this I love this book I thought this book was a lot of fun I thought that coming from a book that was so serious like The Final Empire, reading something that was just fun and entertaining and just didn't take itself too seriously was a great idea. This book is about a group of older men who used to be in like a, a group of adventure, adventurers, yeah, adventurers. Not a word. There used to be a D&D party basically and they used to go out and fight monsters and rescue maidens and and you know they were rock stars literally like <laughs> they were rock stars but now they're old they're settled they have children and one of the group's members has a daughter that decides to heed the call of a siege to a city However, she gets stuck in there, they're gonna kill her, they're gonna kill everyone inside, and he just wants to go get his little girl back. And basically, the gang's all back together again to get this girl back. It's fun. It's a fun book. There's nothing like, I, I just don't think this is a book you, you're gonna go into thinking, okay, this is gonna be a literary masterpiece or anything like that. I just think you have to go into this book thinking this book is going to be fun this book is just gonna be a lot of fun and it's going to be like if i don't know <laughs> i don't know iron maiden got back together and they were touring and they're old and they're complaining about just being old and you know stuff like that it was fun i also really appreciate that this book doesn't have toxic masculinity this book really drills home how men can be physically, emotionally, everything affectionate towards each other and it having no meaning other than what it is. Just love, affection, and and and, 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 and friendship, you know? And, and, and there's even a character in this book that is um, homosexual, that he is a homosexual, or, or at least um, he he has been married to a man so I mean as far as I know I think he is a homosexual or bisexual he is basically 
queer. He is queer. There you go. And um, even though he is queer, he's still part of this whole macho thing, and it doesn't matter. And they they all hug. They they show their love, appreciation. They cry. I just think that that's something that is not talked about enough when people talk about this book. How these men are supposed to represent the most manliest of men in all of earth and yet they cry and they suffer and they love and they love each other and they show love for each other and I really thought that was such a breath of fresh air in just things that I read all the time because you know there's the typical no homo shit there's none of that here. Like literally, there's there's a part where one of the characters almost dies and another character that is over and over said to be like macho man. You know, he's just crying and hugging his friend and it's really nice and sweet and I love that about it. I love that about this book and I gave it five out of five stars. Completely enjoyed it, loved it. Sorry, my like, my bangs are sticking to my forehead because it's so hot. But the next book I read was The Cousins by Karen and McNamus. Now this is the story about a group of cousins whose grandmother basically disowned her children, so their parents. They don't know each other, they don't have a close family relationship, and suddenly their grandmother invites them to come and stay over for the summer vacation and they get a chance to meet and they also get a chance to find out what happened and why is it that their grandmother out of the blue out of nowhere decided to disown everyone and just never allowed them back in or or even to she wouldn't even return letters she wouldn't do anything so um this book was interesting i think that it was a fun read fun quick read but I think that the cover is completely misleading. It looks like somebody they're like it looks like they're gonna be killed off. It looks like they're gonna, you know, suffer some kind of fate. And then the reality is no, it's just them running around an island trying to find out what happened. I like the back and forth in time, which is something that I usually don't like in books. But I just I think this book was okay. I think this is a three star read. It's nothing that I'm going to remember forever. You know, it's not groundbreaking, but it was a fun read. Um, there is a fun love story in here. And I just, I mean, the, the mystery, the mystery is fun. And I liked one of the characters in particular, I really liked. Um, but other than that, what else? Do, it's just an okay read. It's a it's a three it's a three star from me. After that, I picked up Armageddon House by Michael Griffin. Now, I uh, I don't even know how to explain this book. There is this group. There's this group of two couples. So um, well, two men, two women. That are. I'm sorry. Is this this book? This book is really something else. This book. This book is like. It's in the vein of Annihilation, honestly. It's 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 completely absurd. Absurd. I don't even know how to explain what happened. I don't know what what went on. I don't know what happened at the end. It's ridiculous, but it's also it also kept me interested. Like it kept me interested. Um, things change. People change. It's really strange. They don't know why they're down there. They don't know if there's some sort of experiment. They don't know if there's other people down there with them. They don't, there are parts of the ship that make it seem like maybe there might have been more people there. Sorry, I had to change the battery. But as I was saying, nothing makes sense in this book. And yet I was completely taken by it. I wanted to know what was going on. I didn't get much answers, but the reading experience of it was actually really good. There are some trigger warnings here for suicide, for murder, for incest probably, and for domestic violence. So all of that packed into this little book. Um, if you like this whole new absurd 
kind of writing style. I mean, this is kind of like pure nasty, but more sci-fi and I like the characters better. And also, it didn't make me feel like the characters were stupid. I actually felt like I was stupid all throughout reading it. So, yeah. I don't know what else to say. I gave this four stars, but I don't, I'm don't. i not sure what even happened. That's the reality. Oh my god. It's really hot. And I knew I had to film this in the morning, but I wasn't feeling well. So the next book I read was Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab. Now this is the third book in the Cassidy Blake series. This book follows Cassidy Blake who can see ghosts after she had a near-death experience in a lake and then a ghost actually pulled her out of it and now he's her best friend and the kicker is her family are a family of ghost hunters basically they have a tv show and they have written a bunch of books about ghost hunting ghost huntings is that how you say it she travels along with them with the fact that she is the one that can actually see ghosts while they can't it's a really interesting premise it's a really cool book i must admit that i liked the second one more than this one and but as i've said before i like that um, Victoria Schwab has definitely been listening to the whole we're not scanning Harry Potter as much anymore and in the first book she really had the characters like be really really into Harry Potter if you know what I mean like the characters really loved Harry Potter and there were Harry Potter references like in every paragraph and I think she either has listened to the criticism or has you know I guess learned from her mistakes I guess I don't know I don't think it was a mistake but anyway she has learned and now the Harry Potter references are definitely toned down a lot and I really appreciated that I wasn't such a big fan of this book um, but I still gave it four stars because again it was an enjoyable read and it, I just keep, I, I want to keep buying this series. I really want to see where this series goes. I want to see what happens. And this book deals with some really harsh realities. And I think this book is really cool because it features tarot. And it definitely shows that Victoria Schwab did her research when talking about tarot. Because I read tarot cards and I, there was a moment where there was tarot card reading involved. And I really like that it wasn't flippant and it wasn't like she wasn't blasé about it she actually did her research and we got really good reading out of it <laughs> so yeah this was the next book i read i read a book that you're gonna see featured in another video and that is um the drowning boy the drowning girl not the drowning boy by caitlin r kiernan i think that's how you say her name I got this book out of a horror recommendation video that Rachel from the Shades of Orange did and somebody said that this was one of their favorite horror books and this book follows a neurodivergent queer woman who suffers from schizophrenia and whose mother suffered from schizophrenia and she meets a ghost. I think that that's all you should know going into this because I found that this book <sighs> deals with schizophrenia and with ghost hauntings and with relationships and with being in a relationship with somebody who's neurodivergent in such an interesting beautiful way I just think everybody should pick up this book it's slow it's difficult to read it's beautiful and it's amazing i just i i this book in the beginning when i first read it i was like oh it's three stars but then i just keep thinking about this book like i can't stop thinking about this book even months after reading it so this is one of those books that in the beginning you might think mm, this is not exactly for me but the more you think about it the more you realize wow that was an amazing read. So I definitely recommend that you pick up The Drowning Girl by Caitlin R. Kiernan. Um, 
the main character is such a compelling character you feel for her you feel for her struggle i think the way she tells the story really says a lot about her inner struggle with her um mental illness and i as somebody who's seen who's lived with somebody who suffers for who suffers with schizophrenia i found that the, the representation was really really well done i i just i really love this book i think it's amazing and deserves all the praise in the world and it's i, I wouldn't say this book is scary but it takes a lot to scare me especially with a book but i think that it could be scary for some people definitely trigger warnings for a lot of things not i guess trigger warning for mental breakdowns <laughs> that's it that's all i'm gonna say next up i read another favorite of mine from this year i thought i've read like really bad books but in the end i think i've read a lot of books that i've liked i just have also read some bad books in the process so i read leave the world Beh behind by ruman alam i love this book this book tells the story of a family that has rented an Airbnb for the I think for the week and um, the family is you know going through their vacation thing and then suddenly strangers show up at their door and it turns out they're the owners of the house and they say that there has been a blackout uh, New York City is in disarray and if they can stay the night of course them being the owners the 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 tenants are like sure and then we get weird shit happening we get weird shit happening all throughout the book but it just starts getting weirder and weirder and weirder and this is like a really a tale of the end of the world and honestly what would happen if suddenly the end of the world happened right now and in this case i think the end of the world is not brought on by aliens or anything but it does talk about i think climate change nature reclaiming the earth and um i will warn you this book does get gruesome it does it not it, it doesn't get gruesome as in like we're gonna bash someone's head in to survive but there are some things that happen that get really I don't know made my I, i'm hard i'm like i said i'm hard to scare and this book actually scared the bejeebus out of me like because i feel like if the end of the world were to come i feel it kind of would be like this you know it would come out of nowhere we wouldn't be prepared for it and it just would be like a sudden boom and then nature just takes over again you know um i remember this book reminded me a lot of a book i read last year that i hated which was silence i don't remember the author let me check the author oh it's not gonna show up here but silence and uh, i'll put the the cover here uh, but this book i think was a better done version of that book i think this book actually makes you feel that distress of what comes next and also hopelessness I, I think that this book really drives home the point of hopelessness in a situation like this which i mean if you want to go there go there the next book that i read was blindness by jose saramago and i gave this book two stars this book is about a uh blindness kind of illness that infects people and these people get rounded up and they're put into a facility where all the blind people are and also the people that have been exposed to blindness are although you eventually it's very obvious that eventually everybody becomes blind and how basically society disintegrates by going blind which i think is the most ableist bullshit that i have ever read in my life like can you imagine this being published in 2021 this won a fucking nobel prize there is so much talk of people shitting themselves shitting on places they're not supposed to be shitting at and being disgusting and being like and and turning against each other and i'm like is that 
what you think blind people will do. There's another aspect of this book that I really disliked where um, basically they have no names. They're just called the doctor, uh, the doctor's wife. And the whole point is blind people don't need names because they're just voices in the dark. Also, this book makes it seem like going blind would automatically stop you from being able to do anything like for example you couldn't walk out with your dog you couldn't find a supermarket you couldn't like and it also makes it seem like if like there are no more blind people in the world that could help the new blind people i don't know man i just felt this book was really off the mark i really didn't enjoy it I just got angry at it. I got angry at it for the portrayal of blindness and for the idea that going blind would mean basically being the shittiest person you could be, like the shittiest version of yourself. This book has intense trigger warnings for everything, including sexual violence against women. Uh, very well described murder um, a lot of fecal matter and and just I just thought that I, I can't believe that this is a beloved classic like what is wrong with people and why why do you think you should treat blind people this way I just don't understand I mean if this was something like, it, I think the concept of blindness and not being able to see was really well treated in Bird Box by Josh Mallerman, you know? It, it's not, I mean, some people are gonna do mean shit and are gonna be mean just because some people are horrible people. But it's not because of the fact that they have to stop seeing. It's because they're really horrible people. In general, blindness is not going to make you inherently a shit person. You know? And I just don't know. It, and, and also, just the amount of sexual violence against women in this book. Just, it makes me angry. I don't recommend anyone read this book and I just don't understand why this book would be a beloved classic. I just, I feel nauseated at the idea that I read this book and I finished it because I was like, no, this is, this is gonna say something at the end. This is gonna like be better. No, it never gets better. It's just, it's really, really bad book and I don't recommend it. I think this is probably the worst book that I've read this year. I think this is probably one of the worst books that I've read in my entire fucking life. That's how bad it is. Come at me. I don't care. And if, and if you're gonna come at me telling me you just didn't understand the metaphor, what metaphors that blind people or that losing your sight is the absolute worst thing that can happen to you and that it will make you want to rape women in exchange for food, then I don't know what to tell you. The last book I read the um, the second, the first half of the year was The Test by Sylvain Novell. The Test by Sylvain Novell is a book about a man taking a citizenship, citizenship test to become a UK citizen except it comes with a sci-fi twist that I saw coming a mile away and honestly it was fine I gave this book three stars it was okay a lot of people compare it to episodes of Black Mirror which I would agree with it's it's definitely a Black Mirror-esque episode I just found I like what the book had to say about the idea of seeing who's better or who's worse or who is deserving of your nationality. But I just, I don't know. I felt meh about it because once you find out the twist in it, you're like, oh, so it's not like everything that happens. Later, of course, you find out that it does have a like it does have 
what is it called consequences in the real world but in the beginning I was just like so this doesn't have any consequences in the real world so I wasn't really that invested and I don't know I just it didn't connect with me and it's also it's also a novella so there's not a lot I can say without spoiling it I, I think I'm gonna break up with Sylvelle Sylvelle novella because I tried to feel finish the Themis files and I just couldn't do it it was just I just can't I just I, I lost interest in that series so yeah that's it those are the 14 books that I've read in the beginning of this year I am hot it's so hot but I really hope you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and if you've made it this far please leave me a black heart down below just to know that you're watching so that I know that I'm not talking out into the middle of nowhere into the abyss and without further ado I leave you with a friendly reminder that I post every three days <laughs> I post I'm trying to post every Monday Wednesdays and Fridays but if I change that a little bit you know I posting three times a week that's it and yeah without any further ado I bid you adieu and I will see you in another galaxy far far away thank you so much for watching bye